Hello everyone, and today we're going to be talking about linear algebra. So what is linear algebra? Linear algebra is the set of mathematics that focuses on linear systems of equations. In short, that means we're looking at a set of equations like we see in this slide. Here we have a set of variables denoted by x, and we multiply them by some constants a. The math you are familiar with is great for single variables or for a couple variables, but often in robotics we're talking about systems with a large number of variables. There could be hundreds or even thousands of possible values. Linear algebra allows us to write equations that take into account all the variables at once. There are mathematical equivalents of everything you have seen previously in math class, like addition, subtraction, calculus, etc. So before we get into linear algebra, we're going to talk about the basic idea of defining a mathematical object. So you've learned about numbers previously in your math class, and numbers have properties that we can use, operators that we can use to combine two numbers, and also ways to compare different numbers. So anytime you look at a new uh, field of mathematics, you're going to get a similar introduction where you have some object, things you can do with it, and how to compare them. So the first idea in linear algebra is a thing called a scalar. So a scalar is just a single number. It's kind of what you've been working with previously when everything is a scalar. Scalars can be any number, so 1, pi, or a very large number. It doesn't matter. So the first time we're going to learn something new is with a vector. So a vector is just a collection of n scalars, and we put them essentially in a column like you see here. So each vector will have a certain number of scalars, and this is called the dimensionality. So right now we have, at the top we have a vector that has n scalars, so there are n possible values. At the bottom we have ones with 3 or 4 or whatever other number you need. So next, on to vector equality. So two vectors are equal if every index of the vector is equal. So we're going to look at some basic notation here. So we have a vector x and a vector y. And these two vectors are equal when every element is equal. So what I'm doing here is I'm indexing into each element. And that's what the notation i means. And since there are n possible elements in the two vectors, that's why i is 1 through n. So you can see some examples of equality or inequality at the bottom. So we can multiply a vector by a scalar, and that is done element-wise. So for each element in the vector x, we would multiply it by some scalar a. And you can see that by how we're denoting with the subscripts. So scalar multiplication is commutative, which means that a times the vector x is equal to x times the vector a, or associative, we can multiply two scalars together, and then multiply by a vector, or multiply by a vector, and then two scalars. The next thing we have is how to add two vectors together. So we can add two vectors together doing it element-wise. So the resulting vector z is the equal to at every index of the vector x and y, we just sum the two values together. Um, and vector addition is commutative and associative. Next we have the transpose operator. The transpose operator allows us to convert from a column vector into a row vector. So a column vector is what we've been talking about mostly previously. And this is just the standard way we define vectors. But there's also row vectors, which essentially not, you're just going like this. They're very similar, it's just what orientation we're talking about, and this will come up later when we do a little bit more interesting math. So the important property to remember is that the transpose of a transpose is just equal to the original vector itself. The next thing we have is a dot product. So this is kind of like multiplication in the vector case. Um, it's also called an inner product. So what we're gonna be doing is summing each element at the same index multiplied together. So this is an example of what that looks like. So we're taking 1 and 1 and multiplying them together. 2 and 2 and multiplying them together. 3 and 3 multiplying them together. And you're summing across all values. Um, doing this together, we get 14 for y transpose y. But the next co mathematical construct we have is called matrices. So like a vector is a 1D representation of scalars. A matrix is a 2D representation of scalars. So not only do we have a single line, we have multiple lines combined together. So we have rows, which go like this, and then columns that go like this, and matrices are denoted by rows times the columns. Um, so this A matrix here is a 2 by 3 matrix. So you can see here row 1 going across the top is 1, 2, 3, and you can see that the second column, 2, 22, is the second column here. So we have a really special matrix called the identity matrix. And the identity matrix is a matrix that can be of any dimensionality. So it can have any many of rows or columns, but the rows and columns must always be equal. It must be a square matrix. And the, value, the important property of this is similar to what we have one in a scalar case. So one times any number is equal to that number. 
any matrix times the identity matrix is equal to the original matrix. So the next thing we're going to do is talk about matrix equality. So two matrices are equal if every element is equal. And what we can see here is I'm saying A is equal to B, and that implies that every element is equal. So how I'm doing this is I'm indexing into a row, which is denoted by I, or a column, which is denoted by J. So if every row and every column, every value is the same, uh, the two matrices are equivalent. So now we have the transpose operator for matrices. So this operator allows us to flip a matrix. And we're going to be flipping the matrix around a diagonal line that goes through the center of the matrix. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the values like 4 and 2 and flip it across. So the important property to remember is that a double transpose is equal to the original value. The next thing we're going to talk about is matrix multiplication. So we can multiply two matrices together by taking the dot product of the rows of the matrix on the left with the columns of the matrix on the right. This means that the rows and columns must match. So we have essentially a matrix that is a 2 by 3 here, which is A, and then we have a 3 by 1, which is B, which is also a vector. So you can treat matrices and vectors pretty similarly, it's just a vector is a matrix with 1 in the dimension. So these 3's need to line up in order for this operation to be valid, and if they don't, you can't do the multiplication. So we can see down here at the bottom um, what that would look like if you were to multiply out every index. Note that at the end of the day, what we end up with is a 2 by 1 matrix. And that's because essentially if you look at this equation here and you were to cross out the 3's, uh, you would get a 2 by 1 and that's how you know what the final dimensionality of your matrix should be. The property we're going to look at is, is matrix multiplication commutative, i.e. does A times B equals B times A? And if we take two matrices, A and B, and we multiply A times B and B times A, we see we get different values. Therefore, matrix multiplication is not commutative. The second property of matrix multiplication is, is it associative? And the answer is yes. So if we take three matrices, A times B times C, and then we apply our parentheses in different places, what we end up with is the exact same matrix, so matrix multiplication is associative. So finally, we're going to talk about matrix inversion. So similar to what we have in the scalar case of a number divided by itself, you can have a similar property in the matrix case. So we have A times A inverse is equal to the identity. So that was the basics of linear algebra, and that defines the backbone of the mathematics we're going to be covering in this course.